Okay, it's recording now. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Roberta from CFR in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Sorry, I am connected as CFR Europa. Uh, Saskia Lackner, who was the facilitator of the session, she's having some internet troubles and she connected through her phone, so she's not able uh, to be in control of the meeting. Uh, that being said, I will do her role in the beginning and I will have to present myself and Jimena. Hope you don't uh, mind that. Um, just for your information, um, you should know that the meeting is being recorded right now. Okay? Okay, so while we'll start uh, with Jimena, Jimena Andino Dorato is a third culture national of Argentinian Canadian nationalities who has lived and worked in Argentina, Canada, Brazil, and France, and in four different languages, uh, Spanish, French, English, and Portuguese. She graduated as a lawyer in Argentina, and she holds a master in business law. She's currently living in Paris, France, near Gaston Lazare. <laughs> um, I am Roberta Rafael. I am Brazilian and I have lived and worked besides Brazil in Canada and also Luxembourg. I'm fluent in Portuguese, English, Spanish, and I have converse, conversational French and Italian. I graduated as psychologist in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I worked in the human resources industry here and abroad for over 15 years. And I'm currently living in Sao Paulo, Brazil. We're both coaches and we deliver intercultural trainings to mobile executives and their accompanying spouses to help them gain self-awareness and maximize their personal and professional potential. Uh, we both have started working together in Sao Paulo back into, in, in 2014 and we developed a series of workshops to expat spouses. Then Jimena relocated to France, but we still uh, are working together remotely. Uh, we have also volunteered together in CETAR Brazil's program, delivering intercultural training to migrants and refugees to help them improve their chances of employment here in Brazil. So this is our short uh, presentation. And now I will hand the line to Jimena um, okay, slides are not... Uh... Ah, right, sorry. Don't worry. Okay, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's us in pictures. Okay, hello. Thanks, uh, Beta. Hello, everybody. It's really nice uh, to have you here. I'm going to start telling you a little bit, uh, as Roberta said, we work together uh, uh, from Brazil and in France online and everything. And the reason we're here today is we like to, to bridge our own two passions. We like to bridge between interculturalism and coaching. Uh, and the, um, the idea is to share with you a couple of things, a couple of tools we use, and to tell you what we do and how we do it. Uh, we're going to try to make it as interactive as possible. Uh, so our objective is to present five, between three to five tools. It's going to depend on your questions and how deep or how in detail you want to go with uh, the tool. So we're going to start with the first one, but we're going to do a little pause to let you ask questions and see if we can move on to the next one or we're going to just do uh, three of them. It depends on, on, on how you feel. So that's the idea for today. Um, we are going to, the, why we're here is, as I've said, it's uh, the idea of a bridge. That's uh, our goal uh, between our two passions and also uh, because that's the idea we have with our clients, that uh, we help them, you know, move from one place to the other, to, to cross a river or to cross some, some gaps or something. So coaching and interculturalism, they go very well together because coaching is a way to increase self-knowledge, to increase um, how you feel about yourself, what you know about yourself, and then it's a wonderful way to get to the other once you get to know yourself. So know, by knowing yourself, you start knowing the other and being open and understanding the other. And as interculturalists, that's our, one of our goals, to, to, to help people open a little bit their minds. So the way we, we do it is uh, by uh, 
increasing self-knowledge and a lot, asking a lot of questions and uh, getting insights. That's our goal in coaching. People, uh, the, this aha moment when the, people say, the person says, oh, yeah, now I get it. When someone gets it from oneself, can get it from the other too. So that's basically our idea. That's why we use, we use a lot of images in our presentations with Beta. So that's why we, we chose this image of a bridge. We, we try to bridge uh, many different ideas. So we deal with change management, we deal with emotions and coaching, and I think we are all familiar how um, this happens. Uh, this is something we work with as interculturalists uh, too. So how do we do that? Uh, the way we do that is, as I've said, from knowing yourself, finding the uniqueness in the person, uh, so you see there like a yellow uh, tulip between the pink tulips. So we try to identify what's unique from this person, that uniqueness. And once we do that, we try to move to the other picture to get, to get people closer to each other, to try to communicate, to interact, uh, to understand, to better listening. And that's the idea of uh, what we believe intercultural coaching is. And um, how do we do that? There are different ways, there are different paths we can do that. Uh, we can talk about the traditional coaching process, which is more uh, if they're coaches in, if a co participants that are coaches, you're going to know more about that. But it's like a, it's a whole process. Coaching is a process in general. So then we talk about between eight to 10 sessions or even 12. It depends on the needs of the person. But it's a process that goes uh, through a couple of months. It can be once a week, once every two weeks, even once a month. It depends really on what the person needs. And then it's, that's what we call a coaching process with different sessions. Each session can go from one hour to an hour and a half, also depending on needs and timing from, from the person. We can also do uh, like a, a longer session, and then we can talk about uh, uh, coaching session for almost four hours. We do a little pause in between, of course, but the idea is to get the whole picture in one session. Um, and we also do workshops. Uh, in workshops, the advantage is that we mix people from different uh, backgrounds, different ideas, different needs. So we, uh, we have their own person, uh, own work, and we also have the interaction between them, the participants. And that's very enriching. That's another way uh, we do it. So those are the three ways. And the people we work with are mainly expats, uh, mobile managers, or expat spouses. Uh, and the idea is that we coach them. It's more like life coaching. And when we say career coaching for mobile expats, it's career coaching with an intercultural content. It's, uh, the idea is to work with them uh, what's happening in their new environment and what's changing, but we don't do uh, career processes or competences or executive coaching. So the idea is life coaching and um, career coaching. Another thing we do, and that's one of the last tools we're going to present if uh, we have time, is we do a little bit of money coaching too, because we realize that with expats there's a lot of issues that change around money so that's basically uh how we do it three different paths and our clients are made mainly mobile expats and expat spouses uh, so this is where we are this is why we're here and that's what we do and how we do it and these are the tools we want to share so i don't know if there are any questions or we can move on to the first tool. The idea is this, to share tools for you interculturalists. We think these tools can be included some, sometimes in an intercultural training or they can be useful if uh, the client or the trainees have uh, clients. So questions, Mel. Uh, so Sorry, can we move on? questions, I'd uh, ask you to kindly probably write down the chat because I don't seem to be able to manage to, ah, okay, maybe I can unmute people, but I'm not sure. So, um, 
if you raise your hand or if you prefer to write down on the chat, then we can read the question aloud. And if you raise your hand, I will try to unmute you. Can you please repeat the... Does someone ask me to repeat something, but I don't know what. Uh, the third topic of your coaching? Uh, money coaching. I guess that's the third topic. Money, 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 money. Money, money, <laughs> money, money. <laughs> yes, money, money. Like, uh, it's a uh, life coaching or career coaching in the specific sense I've, I've said, not in a development career and money. Okay. So um, can we move on uh, to the first tool better? What do you think? Sure. Okay. So first tool, uh, goal setting, powerful questions and action plan. Actually, the tool we talk about is goal setting. Uh, Probably you're all familiar with the SMART goals, or if you're not, it's okay. We're going to go through it a little bit. The idea is uh, when we move to a different country and we face interculturalism, so this is the, the, um, the context where we use an interculturalism. I, I, I say it again, our clients are mainly expats or expat spouses. So there's people moving from one country to the other. And what we've discovered, and that's what we do in our coaching, is the importance of having clear goals to hold on to. To know, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, and then we're gonna work on how we're gonna do, and uh, exactly what, and when, and where, those are the questions. But the idea is to set a goal. And this goal has to be uh, SMART. What does SMART mean? S for specific, M for measurable, A for attainable, R for relevant, T for time bound. Um, this idea we can, when we have, when we do a traditional coaching process, this is how we start the coaching process. When we do a, a, a coaching session, a long session for four hours, this is how we start. Uh, in a workshop, it can be somewhere in the middle or something that we can, that can be the conclusion of the workshop. We do other tools that we're going to show you later and that the goal setting comes afterwards. This is something it's very, and I usually do it in my intercultural trainer, trainings. I use this tool, even if it's a training, I just, I use it. Maybe at the beginning I say, okay, what's the goal for the session? And sometimes what's at the end I said, okay, what's your goal? And even with uh, global managers, we can use a professional goal and a personal goal. We can combine them. We can do something creative. It's, it's very free. The idea is that when we really want to do one of those uh, smart goals, we need to go through all the letters. We need to be sure that we have that in, the, in, in our goal. And how we do that, that's what we call powerful questions. Uh, powerful questions is like a, uh, WH questions. The idea is it's open questions. It's something that the client cannot say yes or no. It has to be a development behind the question. So that's uh, how, you, how we start the question, like with what, who, where, uh, when, or um, how. Uh, those questions help us to set the goal. They help us all along the coaching process to uh, get the, the client to get their own answers. That's the whole idea. As I've said, like, to have those aha moments, those insights from, from the person. Uh, that's the, one of the biggest differences with uh, mentoring. We don't tell what to do. We don't do counseling. We ask questions and the answers come from our client. So those powerful questions help us set the goal. And the other very, very, very important characteristics for coaching is to go to an action plan. We don't leave a coaching session, a coaching workshop uh, without an action plan. So we have the goal and then we go back again to the questions and that's what are you gonna do exactly, specific, when, how, where, with whom. So the action plan has also to be very, very detailed. That's usually at, by the end of the session. And the idea is that uh, without an action plan, we're, we're not, really doing coaching and it really needs to be uh, an action so those powerful questions uh, are the ones who are going to get us to a goal are the ones who are going to get us to own insights to increase self-development to increase self-knowledge and 
to get to a real action plan. And as I've said, that's the core of a coaching process. Without that, we're doing probably something different. And that's what we try um, uh, to do. So um, what would be a goal? What, what it would it look like to have a, a goal? And that's usually an answer we get from many of our expert spouses. Uh, can you move the slide later, please? Sorry. Uh, oh, it's a, that's an example. Uh, this could be like one goal or two goals. And this is something we work with. Uh, sometimes in coaching, they are, you, you just need to, be, to have one goal to focus on that. Uh, we like to work with one or two to, to, to be open to many variable realities that experts have. So we have, by the beginning of September, I will choose the training that will help me develop my career in France. Here we're thinking, for instance, about a Brazilian expat spouse who moved to France. And what do we have there? Like by the beginning of September, that's time bound. We need a time. We need, some, uh, we need to be clear on that. And I will choose the training, not just a training or something to do. It's the one that will going to help me develop my career in France. So that's specific, that's measurable. It's one training. And um, attainable and relevant is something you work with the client. You probably you don't necessarily see it in the description of the goal, but some, those are questions you ask, like um, how interested it is for you, what's going to change in your life, what's going to change in the lives of people around you. That's, is it really relevant for you? Is it attainable? And again, even if you ask, is it attainable? We don't want a yes or no answer. We want to go deeper and see how that would be attainable and when and what do you need uh, what, do you, what do you already have? What there are the resources you have to get there? And uh, what's missing? What do you need to, to develop? And again, another example, it's the same. It's until June, I, I will have one French friend who, in, who I can practice my French with, have activities together and dive into the French culture. Again, we have the time, we have all the exposure. Again, we have one French friend. It's very specific. It's not just one friend. It has to be French. And with one, it's enough. Because sometimes I want to have friends, but what would be enough? Because some, sometimes the person gets one friend and then, no, it's not enough. But if that was the goal, we can go, come back. So that's the whole, uh, that's one goal that it's relatively easy to use in intercultural trainings too. Uh, and usually uh, what we're, what it helps the person to have uh, his or her own idea, not something that comes from lots of explanations and data, but their own uh, experience. So that's um, goal I, seven. Can you allow me to complete? Uh, just yes. On, Jimena, uh, just like to state that when the client comes to us, either for intercultural training session, session or for the beginning of the coaching assignment, these are dear, these ideas are very unclear. Yes. It's not that the person arrives with a goal, you know, they already know what they need. So um, it's like um, their minds are full of, oh, I feel so lonely. And we kind of translate their feelings and their wishes into examples like those. <laughs> yeah, usually it's, I, I want to feel better. I want to have friends, I want to go back to my own labs, things like that. So that's where we need to work. And those are the questions, why the questions are so important to, to clarify what the client needs. And I, I mean, I, I don't think we can insist enough with, with, with that, but it's, a, uh, it's through the questions they get there. We don't, uh, this is something that comes from the client. We don't say that, we don't, we don't do that. We only maybe take notes but the person has to formulate the whole goal through the questions. We don't say that at all. <laughs> um, so that's for goal setting. Any questions? About goal setting and actions. Um, please, again, if you have questions, write on the chat because I just realized I'm not able to unmute people at all. Okay, from my hand. Okay, so uh, let's move on. 
um, uh, thank you, Jimena. It's uh, with me now. Um, so we, we keep going here covering our agenda. And uh, there is one tool that I, we really like to work with. It's a very simple tool. And uh, we usually draw like a matrix on a flip chart, uh, a piece of paper, or, or different uh, pieces of paper. Um, and yes, the slides will be available after uh, with the recording. Sietari Europa will uh, release the recording. So we'll be able to see the slides and listen to our beautiful voices. <laughs> So this is a matrix that we uh, ask our client. I usually do this on the first uh, meeting and uh, before, even before the goal setting uh, part of the coaching. So we split the a big piece of paper and it's an art and practice activity. So we split it into four um, matrices. Uh, and one is the like uh, things that people like and and, and do. Him and I think uh, if you can mute yourself. Sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to answer some of the questions. Ah, okay. Okay. So on uh, on, on the first uh, quadrant, it's the things that the spouse or uh, the person, the client, likes and and does. On the other one, things that they don't like, but and they like, but they don't do. Then things that they don't like and do, and things that they don't like and they don't do. So the idea here, they they don't see, they don't know uh, this the the keep, eliminate, transform, enhance, improve, keep and transform. We don't show it to them. We ask them to use arts and crafts. Usually, we have uh, magazines and pictures. Uh, glue and crayons and pencils, pillow and, and stuff. So they can write, they can draw, they can paste, they can do like whatever. It's usually an activity that we allow them 40 minutes to work on. And it's a great um, 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 uh, brainstorming uh, part of the process because they go back to know, to really to deep dive into their daily life and they uh, can connect with the things that they really like but didn't pay attention and maybe they, they haven't done in a while. And uh, so it's, it's really, it's a, a very relaxing moment of the session and, and uh, the outcome is great. Um, the clients are very relaxed and they feel very uh, at ease to share uh, some intimate content that usually in a more structured conversation, if you have like a table between you and your client, uh, these things wouldn't probably come out. And then uh, to kind of to, to resume the activity or to, to, to wrap up the activity, uh, in regards to the activities that are listed on the like and do, we we ask which ones our clients would like to keep maybe all but just to make them think about it uh, and then on the activities that they they like and they do, don't do uh, what they can transform what could be different in their daily lives the things that they don't like but do how can they improve or enhance uh, maybe stop doing, find someone else. We don't suggest, but these are usually things that uh, come up. And uh, as far as the activities that they don't like and they don't do, there are two possibilities. Either keep it like that or transform. Um, how can you, you know, start doing? Um, so uh, if you're moving from a country where you have household help and you're moving to a country there's there's no such thing or it's not as available uh, so don't like don't do could be for instance cooking and then the person uh, moves to a country where there's no household help and what can you do to transform you don't like cooking you don't cook in Brazil but maybe in France you would probably, you know, have to start cooking or what, what should you move, um, transform and start doing differently. 
Um, so this is an activity that we like to use a lot and uh, we've used in all the workshops that we've done together. Uh, I personally, I use, uh, I, I, my first meeting with my clients is a three hour long session and I do this activity as a brainstorming and a preparation for the goal setting. Um, do you have any questions? Can we move on? Someone's asking, I don't know if that's clear. Tanya asked uh, why don't get, she doesn't get, don't like and do, why you enhance or improve? You just, you improve the situation. You. Yeah, it depends on what it is. Uh, so that's why you put two possibilities of uh, action. For instance, the don't like, it do. Um, I don't like, uh, to drive, but I have to drive my kids to school every day. So how can you improve the situation? Are you taking the bus instead? Are you hiring a driver? Are you teaching your kids to take the bus by themselves so they can have more autonomy to go to school? So what are the changes that you can do to improve the situation so that you need to do things that you don't like? That's the idea. Yeah, that's it. So can I add something? Because someone says it's changed. Sometimes you cannot change the situation and that's something the client needs to accept. So they, they need, the, the idea is to use the, the way of improving the situation or making it better or less miserable or something like that. But sometimes change is not an option in some cases. And also I think that it's important to analyze it in, in, the, in the, the client's context right so maybe driving the kids to school it's like in some some cities there's a lot of traffic and you only have so much time that you can dedicate to your work or to to your job or whatever is the activity that you as a spouse is doing and driving the kids kind of cuts down you know the time that you have uh, to do that so how could you improve this situation <laughs> Okay, uh, so Steve Miller uh, says that he sees a client having fun with this and invites a lot of play and creativity. Yes, it's, it's very fun. Uh, I can say it's not for every client. Uh, I have very little uh, male accompanying spouses uh, here in Brazil at least. Uh, the women like it, like it a lot and the guys, it depends. I always ask them if they would like to do something like that. Sometimes the more rational type will prefer just, you know, bullet points, just write down and not go through the arts and crafts, but they have the possibility to if they like, and they are welcome to choose. Uh, one thing that is very important about the coaching process is that we give a lot of autonomy and independence to, to our clients. So they, they decide how they want the coaching process to be held. So we are always checking with them, would you like to do something like that? And if they would, it's great. They wouldn't like, it's, it's okay too. Um, there's a question from Pavli Luger. Um, how do you deal with the different kinds of cultural backgrounds? Because not all cultures are used to the same kind of coaching approach directness, relationship, and communication style. In some cultures, certain personal questions are taboo. Not all cultures or people are so open to work and reflect upon themselves. It's, it's, we, we deal with whatever the client, the way the client is, actually. We don't, like, we have our own way of communicating, like, you know, um, we try to adjust to the client and we pay a lot of attention on how the client responds to our way of communicating. Uh, we also use some assessments, personality assessments in the beginning of the program, like MBTI and, and DISC and stuff like that. So we kind of can get a grasp of uh, how to adjust our communication style to the client's style. And it, it's, like, it's like a dance. We try to 
dance according to the song and uh, we, we try some way of style and then we see how the client responds and then throughout the process we kind of adjust sometimes you don't it's a when questions are not so personal in that sense because they're open questions so the client is allowed to say i mean he or she says whatever she feels like sharing and sometimes they don't share everything they just write down in their minds what they're gonna do and they don't necessarily tell us exactly what they're going to do if it's clear in their head and their the action is they can have their own notebook and get notes for themselves it depends if it's a workshop it's all about sharing but usually they, it would be probably that this person would work better with a, uh, with private sessions so that's something also to take into account if it's a workshop a group process or just uh, individual and sometimes i have sometimes i had ex examples that people say okay this is what i'm going to do i'm going to call a person and say do you, do you know what who the person is and yes but they don't necessarily share with me who the person is. They just know the person. They have the name in their head. They know what they're gonna do. That's enough for me, if it's clear for them. That's one way of saying, respecting that not everything needs to be shared, but yes, thought about. Uh, Isvitlana is asking, what is the common language we use? Um, I coach in English, Portuguese, and Spanish and the french i have many french clients uh the french is more like for chit chatting and uh, building trust and relationship but i don't coach in french and Jimena, you want to ask you want to ask uh, i coach in the four languages uh um yes i and common i i couldn't say actually it depends on the country where i live and so uh, in brazil i coach more in french and here in france i would say i coach more in portuguese Thank you. Thanks for the question. Anything else about this uh, tool? We, we find this tool very simple and easy to use. It's actually something that we came up with. Uh, so if you Google, you probably won't find. We call it the like do matrix, but it's, you know, we named it, we baptized it. So uh, you feel free to try out uh, with your clients if you like. Just acknowledge our names of using this idea. Yes, Sometimes you might find it for time management. This kind of squares, there's some coaching tools with time management, but we don't necessarily use it for time management. We have a different idea in mind. And Johari Wingo as well as Molly uh, kindly reminded us. Mm -hmm. so the same uh, design, but with a different uh, approach or a different use. Great. So we move on. Okay. So the next tool that we would like to uh, talk about is the Wheel of Life. Uh, it's a very well known tool if you work with you know, consulting and business environment, and if you are a coach or a trainer. Uh, you can Google it. You will find many, many, many templates on Google. Uh, we just chose one that we thought was more cute, <laughs> colorful. Um, so uh, ideally, uh, how do we do with that? Uh, once we are in a coaching program or in an intercultural training, uh, we try to assess some of the areas of our clients' lives. And uh, you can do it two ways. You can take one from Google that already has the areas, like career in the red line, finance in the green, personal growth, blah, blah, blah. Or you can ask your client to name the areas according to their current um, needs, okay? So they could be different. I usually ask my clients to, to name, and uh, they label it according to whatever it is that they, um, they, they, they are most in need in the moment. So uh, how does this work? Uh, in the blue lines, we ask the client to give to rate their current situation in regards to each one of the areas. So here, for 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 a demonstration example, um, we chose the line on the left uh, that is the one that is 
uh, linked to the label. Okay, so career, my client gave uh, rate number four for the current situation of the career in her life right now. Okay, and then for finance, she gave a rate, she rated seven, and personal growth five, uh, health two, and family nine relationships four and so forth so you have like a cobweb um, it's a very visual exercise and you can have an idea of how uh, things are going on the person's life right now so you give the client another pen or a pencil with another color and then the person will rate uh, the desired outcomes until the end of the coaching program, where would you like to get? Where would you like to be? So for instance, let, let's take career and uh, his current rates number four. And by the end of the coaching program, the person would like to be at a rate eight. So throughout the coaching program, we're going to be asking powerful questions. Again, the questions that Jimena mentioned earlier open questions, uh, trying to help our clients uh, come up with ideas on how to improve their career. And the, the answers vary. It could be many different. It could be doing the training that uh, one of Jimena's clients mentioned on the example of the goal setting. It could be starting a new business. It could be looking for a job. And so we start drawing the actions for the action plan from the conversation using the wheel of life as uh, a, a tool, like a helping tool. Sometimes, for instance, let's see here on the family. Um, my client rated that the rated nine as the current situation, and she's certainly overwhelmed with so much uh, attention to her family. She doesn't have much of free time. She doesn't have uh, babysitting. And ideally, by the end of the coaching, she would like to give a little less attention to the family and probably have some um, more time for, for herself. So sometimes uh, the work that is done is not only increasing the rate, but sometimes it's, you know, decreasing the rate as well. Okay, so uh, Joe is saying that in the Wheel of Life, it's not clear what scores relates to each segment. Uh, I, we picked the line on the left, Joe. So career is, is the left line. Is, I don't know if you can see my map. So we picked career uh, four and eight here on the left, and then finance is the line on the left, okay? And so forth. But the, just to, to add on that, and say, someone answered, Joe, this is an example. When we do it by hand, you can just put the dot in the middle of the, of the slide. You don't, you don't necessarily need to do that on a computer. So you're more flexible with the paper. There, there is a template that I like best, uh, that it's on Google, uh, but it wasn't so cute for the presentation purposes, so we didn't use it. Uh, but it, like the lines continue uh, from, the, it goes from outside the borders of the, the circle, and then there is like a rectangle where you can label it. It's easier. Okay, Joe is excusing himself because <laughs> here. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> but you can, I mean, you can uh, customize the tool. Uh, I really, if you're interested in using it, um, I suggest you Google it and you can choose the template that's most, you know, adequate for your background. Uh, I think that Zareen, she just yeah. shared um, a link for a tool. Thank you, Zareen. So, uh, Petra is asking what exactly we ask. So on the first slide, we ask, rate the areas of your life according to your current situation, your current satisfaction with this area. So how satisfied are you in regards to career? 
Okay, so that would be like the question that we ask. And then the second question would be how satisfied or which, how satisfied would you like to be by the end of the coaching program or by the end of the intercultural training? So rate it, okay? Um, is that okay, Petra? We don't, uh, something that we didn't mention, but it's probably wise to mention is that we don't use all the tools uh, at the same time, right? We have like a planning and every session, every time we meet a client, we have the ideas in our mind, uh, which tool would be great for that specific uh, session. And we present the tool to the clients and we ask if they would like, again, we're giving autonomy to our clients to de design the coaching program whatever way they prefer. So we ask, they would present and ask if they would like to do. Okay. Uh, no, uh, my class, if we were uh, working session for one topic, health, for instance, no, we use one tool for each session. When we do the wheel of life, we do the whole wheel and in one session. It, I mean, sometimes it could take two sessions, but usually it's just one session for the whole wheel of life. So, but one session is the wheel of life. One, we did the goal setting, probably uh, together with the do um, like and don't like and do or that, that we do it as a, we use it as a brainstorming to get to the goal setting so that we can, can combine, especially if we have, as Peter said, if we have a long first session or we are in a four hour session, just one session that it's just one shot for coaching, then we choose and usually, we don't know exactly what we're going to use. It depends on what the client brings. So, yes, there's going to be a goal. Yes, there's going to be an action plan. That we know. But if the person is really confused, well, maybe we use the wheel of life to clarify which areas. So, so it depends on what the client brings, which tool we... It's like we have a, we have a bag full of tools. And depending on the client needs, we, we take one or the other. But for the Wheel of Life, we do it in one session, the, the whole thing. Mo maximum two sessions, but not one for each session. So, uh, Steve, we are kind of running against uh, time here. Time, yes. Steve is suggesting that he uses uh, the Wheel of Life, for instance. He focuses on finance, and then he breaks down into smaller aspects of finance. One label could be income, the other spending, retirement planning, etc. So that could be used. You can adjust whatever way. It's a great idea, Steve. Thank you. Uh, Sylvie so would like to go back to the like and do tool. Uh, because of time constraints, Sylvie, we're going to move forward. And then if we, at the end, if we have some, some time, we can go back to that tool. Okay? Thank you. Um, we still have two tools here. Let's see how the values go. And then uh, Jimena, I can move back to Jimena and she can talk about money coaching a little bit. I'm not sure we're going to have uh, time enough to talk a lot about both of them. So in regards to the values, uh, it's a great tool. I personally, I use with every client. And sometimes if the client is only for intercultural training, I use it during the intercultural training. Um, we have this like inventory of, you know, 150 or so uh, values. And the idea here is that on the first step, our client will choose the 25 uh, values that are most important to them. And then uh, we ask them to divide these 25 values in six different boxes, kind of an exercise of uh, grouping these values. And uh, he will choose either relabel which box or choose the value that is the most important for each one of the six boxes. And then we come up uh, with six uh, main values for our client. So I, I got this example from a German client of mine. Her name's not Susan, though, uh, just for, for confidentiality. And these were her six main values. Challenge, quality of life, love, positivity, intellectual status, and reliability. 
So there are two ways of working this tool. Like in a regular coaching program, in despite being with uh, companies, spouses, expats, or, or locals, uh, we would ask our clients to think about the areas of their lives and uh, take a look of which, which values are present in the areas of their lives and which ones are absent. And then throughout the coaching program, asking open-ended questions again, we're going to see how they can bring those values into all the areas of their lives. Okay. Um, in an intercultural coaching uh, program or during an intercultural training, what we like to do uh, is to work, uh, it's to confront our clients' values with the culture, cultural values, okay? So I brought Brazilian, the six Brazilian values that I work with uh, during my trainings, and they would be flexibility, conflict avoidance, relationships, hospitality, openness, uh, status and hierarchy, and informality. And then with a the client, I like to build, help them build bridges between their own values and the cultural values of the culture they are in. And um, what kind of behaviors and actions, actions the client would start, would need to kind of start doing or, or draw uh, to have a successful integration in the local country. So for instance, uh, for Susan here, one of her values is reliability and one of Brazilian values is informality. So usually in an informal environment, it's, uh, reliability is very low. Um, you don't have things in written, you don't have things documented. So how would she uh, um, start developing new behaviors that the local informality wouldn't be too upsetting for her? Okay, let me see the questions here. Joe, this is a great list. How do you ensure the meanings are the same in different languages? Um, sometimes I let my clients use the Google Translator on their cell phones for translating purposes. If I know the word uh, in the client's uh, own language, I offer a translation. So while they are going through the inventory, we can kind of chat about it and, and look for, for understanding of each one of the values. Uh, no, we don't offer the six boxes with the terms. The six boxes, they, it, the client will do it. I give a piece of paper with a table that has six boxes, and then my client will do it in each one of them. Where can I find a table with the different values for each country of the world? Uh, caring, that you would like, you would have to check. I know Cultural Detective, uh, if you purchase the tool, if you are a member, uh, you have access to the cultural values. Um, I've used um, detect, uh, Cultural Detective in the past, but um, uh, I've, these, are, these are not uh, Cultural Detective Brazilian values, actually. It's kind of a mix. It's something that I built from my studies so um you would have to uh, i don't want to sell cultural detective here that's not the idea but i know it's the one tool that you can you can check um check up okay if anyone else would know of another tool uh, that you can check cultural values please uh, let me know Ulrich, uh, sorry, I didn't quite understand how you get from the 25 leaks to the six most important ones. Okay, so I, I, I offer my clients this table. It's an empty table with the six boxes. And then they will group. So maybe if we go back here to the list of values, um, you see that, uh, let me see, beauty and art, for instance, could be uh, grouped together, but it's totally up to the client, okay? So maybe a community and uh, fairness and social justice uh, is, makes a meaning for my client to group them together, though it doesn't for me. So from the 25, the client's free to group them according uh, to 
their own understanding of how they would, you know, get together. Um, okay. Uh, who else? Uh, Johans, how you manage the difference between gauchos and nordestinos, for, for example? Um, I don't think I understand the context of the question. Sorry, we can go back to that uh, later. Um, uh, Elizabeth just shared a cultural detective website here um, on the chat, so if you want to check it out later. Mm -hmm. okay. and I think just to go back to the gauchos and the nordestinos, and there's another question about the stereotypes. We usually, what we usually do is to, uh, you know, really make the difference between what the stereotype and generalizations, and we use it just to explain. But that's more when we get into an intercultural uh, training. So this is general for a coaching session. Those values are personal values. That's what's the most important thing for us, for the, to, for the people to de develop, again, the self-knowledge and knowing what, where they stand. And the rest, we use it as a frame, explaining, we inoculate in the minutes word saying that this is not, the idea is not to stereotype the new country, but to uh, statistically what the culture looks like and work from there. But again, the action plan and everything is going to be specific for this person. So uh, it, it, it rarely happens to go to stereotypes because they, they focus on the first part and the, their own values, what to do with them. I don't know if that clarifies a little bit. Uh, I think that now that you mentioned him and I understand actually what he was asking and um, these are kind of country values and despite the fact that the person lives in the Northeast or the South of Brazil, we all share those hmm. values. So uh, maybe, I don't know, people from the North would be even less informal than people from the South. From, but from a foreigner's point of view, we're all too much informal, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a, a national value. So the regional differences, uh, they don't make uh, a huge influence in that case specific. Okay. So it was very interesting to see uh, my client, she's a doctor. Um, she was pursuing her doctorate in Germany and she moved to Brazil and Brazil has a characteristic that uh, doesn't allow working visas for a company spouses usually. There are a few exceptions. So they all have to do either volunteer work or start their career as an entrepreneur or something like that. And she knew that and she wanted to work uh, as a volunteer in a, in a facility that dealt with, uh, uh, she was a um, psycho, uh, psycho neurologist, I think. So uh, she was doing this internship uh, in this hospital, uh, rehab hospital for people uh, who suffered accidents and had uh, some like body disabilities. And uh, Brazilians uh, think that Europeans and North Americans in general are like idols and God, like we idolize uh, foreigners from the Northern Hemisphere. And uh, so this goes into the status and hierarchy value. Uh, she's more important than anyone else just for the fact that she was German. And what she praises most is intellectual status. Um, so it was interesting to see how she dealt uh, with her expectation in regards to how the team would uh, welcome her. And at the beginning, it was really hard for her because people were kind of afraid. They thought that she, you know, she knew everything because just because of the fact she was coming from Germany. And she, what she really wanted was to have lunch with the people during lunchtime and, you know, be with the people and and have a group setting and stuff and they would kind of uh break apart from her because of this status uh, value so it was very interesting to see how how she uh, developed herself and her skills and her thoughts and how she was successful in finally after almost a year integrating into the brazilian team at the hospital 
Okay. Uh, let's see the time. Oh, I have still five minutes, so I think it's uh, worth uh, if you allow Jimena to talk about money coaching. What do you think, Jimena? Yeah, we can. I, well, I can do it very quick just to introduce the the the, the idea. As we've said, uh, with, when when with our clients, we see it a lot, especially with expat spouses uh, who really change their relation—not the relationship with money, but their reality with uh, money really changes because yeah, usually, not usually, but sometimes, and especially in Brazil where we work together, we saw it a lot, uh, work permits are not easy to get, uh, so they don't work. And for, so they start uh, to depend on their spouse for everything. So lots of things, some things that were old stories and everything wake up. So this is, a, this is actually a different process. It's not intercultural coaching, but we use it a lot in this expat uh, context. Um, this is a, a process developed by Deborah Price. A, she's an American. And uh, the idea is she works with archetypes. You, the pictures you see, the, the characters you see there in the picture represent different archetypes. So we have eight money archetypes and the whole idea of the process is to start talking to them, to say, okay, what's my uh, main archetype now? Is it helping me or is it playing against me? So I need to learn about it and I need to learn how to talk to it and how to develop what's going to help me to deal again with my reality. We, we work a lot with reality, especially with ex expert spouses. That's something we, we need to work on. Um, so there's an assessment we, the client does with a couple of questions. Actually, they're adjectives. How is your relationship with money? Then we uh, check the assessment and we say what's the um, prevalent archetype at this present moment. And it's different from assets, assessments that we know like MB, MBTI or DISC because this one changes very, very quickly. So every move, this can change and it can wake up a dormant archetype. And as it's, it's been sleeping for years, it's kind of overwhelming for the person because she or he doesn't know what to do with this new reality. Uh, so here's some, the, the name of the assessment, actually it's a money coaching assessment. Uh, it's, a, it's a tool that uh, Deborah Price developed. So you can take it, uh, you can get to my website or to her website and you can take it and you can even take it online. Uh, and then you need to, the, the whole idea is to understand what's going on and where this comes from. It, uh, it's really a bridge between coaching and a little bit of psychology too. Because uh, in this case, someone asked about the motivations when it was the goal setting, and I've answered in the, in the chat that we don't work that much with motivations in the goal setting, maybe with values, yes, but why? If you, if you remember when there were the powerful questions, why wasn't there? We don't go, uh, at least not, in a short uh, coaching process to the why question. In this process, there's more working about the personal story, about uh, the father, the mother, how uh, re relevant relatives uh, made us who we are right now with uh, money. So once this is worked with, like uh, it can also be a workshop and then we do the assessment we do it uh, in, the, uh, in the session. You just answer the questions. I do the, uh, I add all the results and then we discover which is the uh, present archetype. And with that, we kind of discover what other archetype would help us to feel better and to develop in this present moment. So I do like, uh, sm again, a small action plan that's saying, okay, this is what's present. What are uh, the baby steps, I call them, usually in money coaching, to get to the desired state, to where we want to go with this uh, relationship um, with the uh, money. Usually, I do a workshop before, and then we can work for four sessions with the client, discovering our own personal biography, 
relationship with relevant uh, relatives, mother and father usually, but it can be grandparents, aunts, it depends on the case. Then we go back to the assessment to see if something changed or evolved in a way. And then it can be the kickoff for another coaching process as new goals, how to develop things. And then we find things like, okay, I need to find my uh, training to move on with my career or I need to find a volunteer job and how to deal with the, the fact of not getting any money or so. So it's, it's proved to, for us to be really useful uh, as, uh, as an extra tool to help because those are things and many cultures, uh, this is taboo, so they don't want to talk about, uh, about money. So it's a way of uh, cleaning a little bit what's going on and saying, this is bothering me. And even with very psychoanalyzed people, it's a subject sometimes they, they don't uh, talk about. Uh, so um, as I've said, it's a kind of a workshop or a four session process. And it's all about knowing your archetype and learning how to talk with it and how to do small steps. I, I really work with baby steps in this process, not big action plans. Uh, and it gets to better results to do it very, very slowly to move from one part to, to the other. So I don't know if there are any questions about that. It's very short. It's, a, it's an interesting process, but it's, a, it's kind of a process in itself, but that really uh, help us with things that are, are not moving. Sometimes they say, okay, I really want to volunteer, but for one reason, they don't do it. And then doing this, we find out that the reason the way they're not doing it, it's not that they cannot find a volunteer job, or they're not happy with the people they're working, it's that they need to work on themselves, what's going on with themselves and their relationship with money. And once this is done, it, it gets so much easier to find their place, their new place in their relationship, like uh, with their spouse and with their new culture, the new country, the new society. Okay. So. Um, I realize we are on the top of the hour. It's too past, uh, actually, to be fast. Um, uh, we will be online for another few minutes if you would like to hang on, um, hang out, uh, and you know, ask. <laughs> but uh, I think we have to end our presentation here. We'd like very much to thank Theater Europa for this opportunity and everyone that is online as well for listening to us. Here you have our contact information. Please feel free to email us, visit our website, or either WhatsApp us, and we'll be happy to uh, continue the relationship with you. Um, okay, so there's a lot of people Saying okay, yes, yeah, thank you. You're, wel you're welcome, de rien. <laughs> imagine, imagine, <laughs> de nada. Um, let me stop, um, recording, okay.